Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today, it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to talk about some fun sh um, short-form literature that uh, I encountered in my travels. Uh, it's from an author uh, who is Antiguan, um, who I never, um, I've never encountered before, um, either this author or writers from uh, Antigua and Barbados, um, which I think is the, the, uh, the collective sort of island, maybe? I don't know. I think they're, they're on separate islands. I might be thinking of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, but anyways, this is a short story about a young girl's uh, walk through a mysterious landscape. I am referring to What Have I Been Doing Lately by Jamaica Kincaid, which was uh, published in the Paris Review in 1981. For those who don't know, uh, Jamaica Kincaid is a uh, Antiguan writer, as I noted before. Uh, she's uh, noted for writing um, children's stories as well as short stories, nonfiction, and uh, some uh, some books um, that she's got published over the years. Uh, she was born in the 1940s and she is still alive today as of the, the point that I am saying this in, in this present moment in time. Uh, and, uh, yeah, she's, she's noted for writing about, uh, feminism, uh, racism, uh, class, um, those, uh, those kind of ideas. Also writing about her, her native, um, Antigua, um, where, uh, where, like, things have, um, where, where, like, I, I know, like, one of her stories is about the danger, dangers of a young girl walking the streets of, uh, Antigua at night, uh, which, um, it touches upon uh, misogyny and and uh, sex and sexual assault and those kinds of ideas. Um, I haven't necessarily read that, uh, but um, I would be interested in reading more of her work um, after um, after having read this, which is pretty weird and 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 pretty good. Um, she's, she's mostly praised having won awards and also teaching at Harvard, uh, which is always cool. Uh, but, uh, she has been noted as being like a little bit angry in her work, which is that really a criticism? Like you wouldn't necessarily say that about a man a lot of the time. Um, and, uh, you know, women have the right to be angry because of what is happening to them in the world. So it just feels like a weird criticism of her work. Uh, but without further ado, let's talk about what I have been doing lately. I will do a summary, a little bit of an analysis, and we will move on from there. So what I have been doing lately focuses on a young girl uh, walking through a mysterious and cha ever-changing landscape. Uh, it's difficult to describe this landscape as sometimes it is it is empty, sometimes there's a river involved, other times the river goes away, uh, and it's a very uh, short, short story, so uh, it's really difficult to get a get a bead on what this this sort of landscape is like. Uh, but she's she comes out of her home and she's uh, she decides to head north. She sees the um, the star Venus uh, and and makes a comment about how the uh, how Venus is is the the morning star or something like that. And uh, she also sees a monkey, and she notes that's a monkey and keeps on walking. Um, and then she gets to a river and decides that there's a bunch of options that she has. And one of them is to wait um, forever, or like a couple years, in order to build a boat and then take that boat across the river. And indeed, that is what happens. The narrator says they wait uh, a couple years and then a day, and then they take, the, uh, take their boat across the river where they encounter a strange family, including a boy that is playing outside and um, who does not seem to acknowledge the young girl uh, who is walking through the, this mysterious landscape. Um, she then keeps walking and encounters a what she calls a deep hole, uh, where she decides to walk into that deep hole. But as she, as she starts spinning around uh, further and further into that deep hole, she begins to feel uncomfortable and she sees mysterious writing that she can't quite make out. 
And so she decides to, to reverse herself and exit the deep hole. And she's like, okay, you can close now. And that seems to close the deep hole. Um, and then, uh, yeah, she begins to keep walking through this landscape. As the narrator is continuing to walk, the a stranger uh, approaches from the distance where the narrator notes that they could be their mother, it could be uh, a woman in general, and indeed it is a woman, although the I don't think the narrator notes that it is actually her mother. And she, the narr- uh, this, this stranger just asks, like, what have you been doing lately? And the narrator says, I, uh, here is what I have been doing lately, which is the title of this, of this short story. And they begin recalling the events of the short story and with some changes, which is highly unusual uh, because it's just a, you think it's like, oh, she's just going to repeat back. But then she starts making a few noticeable changes that just that just don't make sense because she recalled meeting the monkeys but she said she threw a rock uh, a couple rocks at the monkeys and then they started throwing the rocks back and left a big gash on her face and that gash healed but now it feels like false skin to her uh, and then she also uh, crosses the river by taking a boat this time like she doesn't have to build one herself and she encounters people uh, with with black and shiny skin on the other side but as she begins to get closer to them what seems like perfectly happy and black and shiny people turns out to be mud people who feel wrong and make her feel un- uncomfortable uh, and as she continues to walk uh, she begins to miss the the real world she says as um uh th- this world doesn't like qu- like quite feel so kosher to her like she wishes she was at home or even in church reading a psalm and as the story ends uh she appears to wake up as the doorbell rings in terms of analysis this story is a real doozy it reminded me a little bit of a worn path by eudora eudora welty um and that i feel like again this is something you could analyze line by line although um i do have to wonder if it actually has any meaning like a worn path with with a with a clear kind of idea or many multiple meanings this one might not have any and i'll get to that later in the in the analysis but one thing that uh, Jamaica Kincaid talks about in this story is the is the dream world like this appears to be a dream for the young girl in the story the narrator seems to be like wandering through it and my evidence for this being a dream is the ever-changing landscape what she looks at at one moment and doesn't necessarily exist the next moment she walks into a, a a deep hole as she says and and just spins around in it and that doesn't seem to happen in reality um and i don't think this is just simply a hallucination on uh on the narrator's part or um, although it could it very well could be you could you could ascribe this to something like schizophrenia or a drug-induced fervor uh, I don't really know if that's the case, and, it, and the writing would suggest that that's probably not the case. Um, but the uh, my other evidence for this is she wakes up in bed, she hears the doorbell ringing, and uh, you know that that would seem to indicate a, a dream right there. The landscape is is morphing rapidly, as I as I noted before, and everything quickly turns into a nightmare. Like whereas before she was talking about you know noting the monkeys and moving on, like. In a, in a different recollection of it, it turns into a nightmare where the monkeys are throwing rocks at her as she also throws rocks at them. And then the uh, the deep hole that uh, that makes her feel very uncomfortable, like this this somewhat positive dreamscape quickly turns into a nightmare for the narrator. And I, I do think that the stream of consciousness writing, where she's just writing down everything that she's seeing, there doesn't appear to be any paragraph breaks in this story. And thankfully, it is a short story, so that doesn't become like, obnoxious or anything. Uh, but she's just writing down what's happening to her throughout the entire story and her feelings and, and what's happening now she's affecting uh, a bit of the story and I, I do think it adds to it because that's exactly what happens to the the dream there's no un- unifying sort of structure to to dreams they just sort of happen unless you're a lucid dreamer and you're making things happen but like it just sort of happens to you and then you uh you uh like the dream is over. So it's just one long string of events and then ta-da, that's it. Uh, so it, it does feel like uh, Jamaica Kincaid is, is 
is touching upon, like dreams and the dream world. And I, I do have to commend her for her writing here because this is exactly what a dream feels like. Like this, this sort of nonsense, nothing really makes sense, uh, uh, sort of like ever moving, ever, ever, ever shifting reality that you don't realize is ever shifting until you wake up. Uh, but perhaps the narrator realizes that she's in a dream or, um, or, or something close to that. Another thing worth noting about this story is the, uh, the sort of the grouping of the monkeys and the strange family that the narrator encounters. Uh, because when they first encounter it, they, they talk about how they just make note of the monkey and then like how the family is kind of turning away from them, not really wanting to acknowledge her existence. Uh, but when she, when, when she meets a stranger and they ask like, what have you been doing? She recalls the events differently. And I, I, my question is, why is there a change in this account of what happened to her? Of something that happened like, like a couple pages before, like, like something that would be fresh in your mind. Is it because dreaming is ever changing and that there is no necessarily logical account of what's happening? So like, in her mind, yeah, that's exactly what happened. And like, because of the, the bad experience with the, with the sort of deep hole thing that she fell into, maybe the like the maybe that that positive experience was just shifted into a, a nightmare um i'm not really sure like uh, again this is this is very open to interpretation here maybe the narrator is ashamed what happened uh because she she talks about how she met saw the monkeys and moved on but this could be a bit of an unreliable narrator here where she threw rocks at the monkey and because something bad happened to her she changed um her uh like her account of the events and because that the same thing could really happen with the strange family how like the, at first they were just a happy family being there and then they were like mud people who were not um not really like true or like they they didn't seem to actually exist and maybe this is again the narrator lying in an effort to 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 sort of distance himself from the fact that they were so uncomfortable by these these black and shiny like mud people who didn't seem to actually be there um again i'm not really sure but uh, it seems like the narrator is either ashamed of their actions and how they viewed these these two things or they're just straight up lying to distance themselves and and make them feel better from this 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 very uncomfortable set of events that are happening it is also possible that kincaid is saying what seems to be good at first can quickly change and and become bad sort of pessimistic pessimistic view on on reality but uh based on what i've encountered from jit making kincaid and what i've heard from others it does seem that uh that that might be her that, that pessimism might be her brand of, of writing um given that what she's seen of the world i again i don't know enough about kincaid to confirm that and uh it because this is so in, open to interpretation it's it's very well possible that i could be wrong here and then the last question that i noted earlier is does this actually hold any any meaning if this is a dream does anything that i just said here actually matter and I think the answer is, is probably not. Um, like, it could be that Jamaica Kincaid is just simply telling us a story of a dream that she had, or she's just making up a dream that someone else had. And it could be that dreams are inherently meaningless, as other psychologists have noted in the past, that, you know, some people say dreams hold great meanings, and others, you know, including me, say they're just the events of the, the past um, meshed together by your brain to create something interesting while you're, while you're dreaming in a, in a, in a state of sort of nothingness um so it, it could be very well that that jamaica kincaid is talking about events that happened if they hold any meaning it's because we ascribe meaning to it and maybe that's exactly what the story is about because uh you know like before like with the monkeys and the uh the, the family like when she first encountered them she didn't ascribe any meaning to it but afterwards, maybe maybe she did, um, and she she did note that there was no writing on on the words that she saw in the deep hole. So like or like there were there was writing, but she couldn't understand what it meant, and so she couldn't ascribe meaning to it or something like that. Again, I'm not really sure. It's very well possible that this, that this entire story is is meaningless, and 
is is just an uh, exercise and ascribing meaning to where there is none. Um, I don't really know. But I, I also looked this up online and I found a couple of forums where people are like, what does this mean? I'm not quite sure what it means. And I think given that there are, are frequently people who ask that question, again, like it might be that either um, there is no meaning or um, my other guess as I was reading this was perhaps I'm not the right person to read this story. Maybe if you're a young girl as the narrator is in this story, if you're Antiguan, if you're if you're black perhaps, or if if you're Jamaica Kincaid herself, like maybe you might have more understanding of what this story means because you live that experience. Uh, but I have none of those experiences, and so uh, perhaps uh, this story is meaningless to me in that way. Anyway, those are my thoughts on what I have been doing lately by Jamaica Kincaid. A very confusing story, uh, but still pretty interesting. I, I, I feel like um, I, I have that experience with a few of Jamaica Kincaid's uh, work, where I've um, I've also checked out um, a Girl by Jamaica Kincaid, and it was also pretty confusing. I wanted to talk about it for this channel, but I didn't uh, I, I, I didn't have enough to say about it. I might talk about it later, though. Who who was to say? Uh, but just because I don't understand it does not mean I don't find it interesting in that I don't think other people could gain something from this story. Um, and so that's why I'm going to recommend it to you out there. If you, uh, if you, you can look for it on the Paris Review, you might have to buy a subscription to it, um, and you'll be able to, to read it. But, uh, I, I do think it's a story worth reading and worth checking out, uh, as with most Jamaica Kincaid works, um, because I'm sure she has a lot of interesting things to say. Uh, if you read the story before, or you simply want to ascribe meaning to it and tell me what you thought it was about, you know, do so below. Let's have a discussion about what I've been doing lately. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this author and this story if they don't already know. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and dreamy travels. Farewell.